The truth is that a lot of women are of age to be called mature, but not a lot of women are actually walking in maturity, okay? Walking in a developed mindset, you know, a little bit more wise, you know, walking in integrity and all of those things. So here are 10 rules that I believe every single woman that is calling themselves mature should be living by. Hey successful, thank you so much for joining me on this video today. As you know, we're gonna be walking through 10 rules that I believe that every mature woman should be living by. On this channel, I love to focus on anything to do with a growing woman, a maturing woman, that woman, all the things. So if you have any questions on your growth journey, let me know down below and I'll be so, so happy to make another video about them. I'm learning and I'm happy to be learning alongside with you. So let's go ahead and get started. What are these 10 rules? So rule number one is to stop expecting yourself out of others. This is a really big one for me. I had to learn this in my lower 20s because I am such a giver. I am such a person that I'm very excited. I'm very like, you know, I just love life. I love friends. I love to love out loud, right? Right? And I used to think that people had to do the same towards me and I was very wrong about that. So I used to measure how people would treat me based on if they did things the way I would, if they loved how I would. And that was very toxic to myself and also to those around me, whether it be your family, your friends, anybody that you think, you know, is supposed to react a certain way for you, do not ever, do not ever expect you out of them. Because the thing is, you are you for a reason and they are them for a reason. We're all add a different aspect, a different flavor to life by just being ourselves. So if you now expect others to be you, it doesn't really work that well, right? Because you should expect others to be themselves and you should love others for who they are. So if you are constantly expecting yourself out of other people, start to ask yourself, why is that? Do you actually love this person for who they are? And the thing is, it can be really hard, right? Because it can be something that's not necessarily a personality thing. It can just be a common sense thing, but I had to learn. Not everybody has the same common sense that you grew up with. So for example, like I grew up in a very African household. If I show up at somebody's house and everybody is cooking, everybody's helping, people are doing things. I'm going to feel so awkward sitting down and doing nothing because my mom taught me to get up and help. Like, who are you? You're going to get up and help. If people are working, you're going to be working too, right? That's just how I grew up. So I'm going to feel really awkward sitting down and just watching people work, right? Somebody else may have not grown up like that and come in the house and people are working and they would sit down. And that doesn't mean that they're rude or it doesn't mean that they're not helpful or that they don't care. They just have not done that before. They just don't know that it's a thing to get up and be like, hey, let me help with this. Because a lot of people actually, growing up in the US, I realize that people feel weird, like kind of jumping in your business, kind of, you know, opening your fridge and doing things like that. That's not something that's normal for a lot of people here in the US. But for me as an African, I'm like, if I'm somewhere, that's just like second nature, right? So understanding that, that very simple thing and knowing that, hey, this person may want to be helpful, but they just don't know how to be helpful. It doesn't mean that now they are wrong for um, sitting down when they walked in. They just don't know that it's normal in that setting to walk up and go wash somebody's dishes. You know what I mean? That was a very simple example and I can go in so much more detail and so many more pathways as far as friendships, as far as family relationships, relationships, like romantic relationships, that's a huge one. But I think just the big overarching rule is stop expecting you out of other people. You're gonna be so much happier that way and you're gonna begin to see who other people are and love them for who they are and what they bring to the table and not what you think they could be bringing to the table. It's so toxic and so unnecessary. Next one is understanding that help comes from God, not who you think it comes from. Not your friends, not your family, not anybody that you have helped before so you expect them to help you back. No, 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 no. Help comes from God. Sometimes we think that because I help somebody two years ago, when I'm in need of help, they're going to help me. And it's just not a good way to think because we have to understand that God is our helper and God can send a random neighbor down the street to help you when you are in time of need. So you should never help someone thinking that, oh yeah, I'm doing this because tomorrow they're going to help me. Help someone out of the flow of your love because you want to help them or you have the capacity to help them. Do not ever do it because 
you know that one day they will help you. That may happen, but that also may not happen. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Help comes from God. So the same way that you want to help somebody else, God literally sent you to help that person. So whenever you are in need of help, know that God is the one that's going to bring your help. God is going to designate somebody in your family, your friends, someone you don't know, your coworker. It doesn't matter who it is, but just know that God is going to designate someone to help you in that season. So that way when you're living your life around your family, your friends, you're not doing things out of expectation that something will happen to you. You're doing it out of flow of your life. Love and it brings so much peace and just ease to life because you're never expecting people to do something for you. You just know that God's gonna pull up. Rule number three is to honor those who inspire you instead of being jealous of them. This is something that I don't know, I feel like a lot of women do it and they don't mean to do it on purpose, but like it's just a woman thing, I feel like. Maybe it's a men thing too, but I just like I see it a lot with women where we may be inspired by someone, but all of a sudden it turns into jealousy instead of just being like happy for them and cheering them on. It seems like we want to do the opposite. Um, this is a place where we can really work on ourselves to honor, 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 honor. And that may look like a lot of different things. That may look like giving them something. It may look like congratulating them, blessing them, wishing them well, um, following their journey, whatever it is, right? Whenever somebody inspires you, understand that that person did something to get there. Understand that even if you don't like them at all, there was a sacrifice, there was a diligence, there was productivity in order to get to that level that they got to. So celebrate that, honor that. Because the thing is, no matter if this person is somebody you don't like at all, <laughs> the person is still inspiring you in some type of way. So there's no point in being jealous. If this person clearly has something that you deem valuable, you deem exceptional, right? honor them that is something that you may desire so if you now start looking at that person in a negative way you're actually also looking at what they have in a negative way and it's causing you not to get closer to that thing so just learn to really honor people learn to be excited for people even when they have something that you want it's a beautiful thing when you're able to celebrate and honor other people whether or not you're at their level their quote-unquote level or achievement or not just be willing to honor those people rule number four is understanding and accepting that everyone has different capacities okay what do I mean by this everyone is capable of doing different levels of things and it doesn't mean that one is like less than the other it means that everyone has different abilities like somebody may know how to write somebody else may know how to like um, draw really exceptionally right everyone has different abilities and different capacities like, of course people have multiple and they can do all the things right it's just to understand that God has given us different talents right and that's why it's so beautiful how everyone is kind of interdependent on each other because we all have different abilities now understanding that I like to use this rule to help me to understand who to talk to about certain things because if I have a friend who's really good at writing I may go to them and talk about this drawing issue that's really bothering bothering me right but I need to understand that that friend may not be able to help me at the capacity of somebody else who is an expert at drawing this is like very basic example we have to understand that somebody may just not have the solution to help you it doesn't mean they don't like you it doesn't mean they're not trying to help you it doesn't mean that they hate you they literally may just be giving you what they have in that moment going back to my example if the friend that's really good with writing and I went to for drawing issue gives me advice and it's bad advice because it's the best that they can do for a drawing I can't now get upset because I'm the one who went to that friend to ask for advice understand that because everybody has different capacities you don't necessarily have to share everything with everyone it's just a rule of thumb right think about who you're sharing certain things with are you doing it because you just want to talk about it fine right but if you're doing it for you, you want to seek a solution understand that hey let me go to someone who has capacity for this let me go to someone who is able to help me with this thing right instead of just going to everybody about anything right I think it's just very important to focus in on your conversations focus in on how you are seeking help another example is if you're trying to go on an entrepreneurship journey you may go to a really close family member and they may be like what you can't do this like da, 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 right but they're not doing it out of hate for you they're not doing it because they don't think you can they might be doing it because at the level of understanding of whatever you're submitting to them they genuinely feel like it's best for you not to even try because from their understanding and their capacity they've never seen this work before right so everyone that is around you that may love you and are really close to you may not always give you the right advice because they don't have capacity to give you that right advice now if you go to someone that has done that thing before or maybe done something that is groundbreaking before they might give you a different perspective because they're like hey this is what I did when I was in your shoes and this is who you can go to for help for example sometimes you may go to 
um, a family member or a friend thinking that we're going to get a certain result out of them, but we don't because they just may not have the expertise on that subject. That understanding is something that really helped me to just look past a lot of comments that people have said to me or a lot of things that I've heard just because I've understood that, hey, this person did not mean to harm you. This person said the best thing that they could at their level of understanding of that topic. It doesn't mean, again, that they're stupid or anything like that. It just means that their expertise doesn't come with what you're just asking. People usually mean well, but they may just not know better. So when you're going to someone for help, go to the person that has the expertise or the capacity to help you with a problem that you are trying to solve. Rule number five is that success is in your hands, baby. Ooh, this is a good one. God has done every single thing. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. He has literally given us eternal life. He said here, right? He has um, put everything under under our authority it's literally in our hands to take that and run with what God has done he has given us ability he has given us the spirit of God he has given us the word of God he has given us the mind of Christ I mean literally we don't lack of anything right now it's about how can I submit myself enough to the will of God so that I can move myself forward so success is in your hands and something that you really have to come to terms with is that where you are today is a result of the decisions that you have made in your past. That's just the truth. Of course, there are situations that we could not have gotten out of. When you look at the grand scheme of things, a lot of the things that you have done or said in your past made up your result of today. That is just what it is, right? And it's funny because a lot of times we say, oh, you know, when I'm this year old, this is gonna be different. Or when I'm able to do this, it'll be different, right? And we find ourselves in that position and things still not being different. So we have to ask ourselves, what am I doing? that is not causing me to move forward. Something I'm still going through even today is like idleness, right? Like I, I used to always say, oh, when I'm married, I have so much time. Or when I move into this place, I'll have so much time. And now I'm here and I'm still struggling to um, submit myself to what I wanna do. So the thing is success is in your hands. It's not on your situations. It's not on where you live or anything like that. You can always take the very next step, right? Of course. I know that everybody has different lives. Everybody has different capacities that we just talked about, right? Everybody is differently privileged. But the, the point is that you can take one step. You can do something for yourself right now. You may have to take 10 more steps than your neighbor, right? But the thing is you can still take one step to get closer to where you want to get to because success is in your hands. A lot of times you just have to ask yourself, how bad do I want it? Because there are people that are in much less worse situations than you and they figure out how to get out of it because they just want it that bad. So we have to be willing to accept the fact that success is actually in our hands. We just have to want it bad enough. So the question is how bad do I really want this? All right, rule number six is that you do not have to be right all the time. Part of maturity is being okay with being wrong. Being okay with even publicly being wrong. Knowing that you are learning and you're in a journey of learning kind of puts you in this place of confidence and knowing that, hey, if I'm wrong, that's okay. This is my journey of learning. It's such a relaxing place to be when you can just say, hey, I think this, but I may be wrong. And if I am, being willing to sit and let somebody explain to you what about what you just said is wrong. It is just so I don't know, it's just so freeing. Like it's okay to be wrong sometimes. It also gives you confidence to speak out because a lot of times people don't speak up because they don't wanna be wrong. But if you're okay and confidently ready to be wrong, it's just so free. You can speak freely, like you can have conversations. You don't have to worry about anything. Whenever you allow yourself to be wrong in front of others, it also creates this relaxation in the room where they're less worried about being wrong and everybody is just relaxing and speaking to each other and it's just, it just creates fruitful conversation to know that, hey, I don't have to be right all the time and I can allow myself to be wrong, even if it's in public, and I can learn from other people and let them have their moments as well. Which, by the way, is kind of a bonus rule, is to let people have their moments. Things don't have to be about you every time. You don't have to be the center of attention every time. Be willing or, or be able to let someone talk about themselves for a long period of time and celebrate them and be all about them in that moment. Like, you don't have to be like, oh yeah, I mean, da da da. You know how people will like, I think this comes from insecurity when, you know, somebody's sharing about themselves or something and somebody, and the other person just has to add something about themselves in that moment. Like, just allow people to have their moments sometimes. People love to talk about themselves. People like to feel celebrated. And you'll have your moments too, right? But also help other people to have their moments. You don't have to one up people, right? You don't have to you know, always have the piggyback. Just let people have their moments, talk about them, celebrate them, and move on. I just think that's just something that's very important to be able to do in life and in your journey of maturity. All right, rule number seven is to accept help. 
accept help. If you're not willing to accept help, do you really think that help is going to keep coming if you keep denying it? Rule number eight, do not go back and forth with people when they have ridiculous comments. Sometimes silence is the best answer. I just, there's just one thing that somebody said to me in a public setting that was so ridiculous. And I just remember being silent. And I was like, I am not gonna respond to that. I'm not even gonna engage in that conversation. And just like that, that never happened again. The person moved on, I moved on, everybody else moved on. Everybody just like kind of stood still for like a good 10 seconds and then people moved on. But now if I had engaged in that conversation, it would have just been so much more annoying, so much more rambunctious for no reason at all. So the best response oftentimes is silence when people are being absolutely ridiculous or inappropriate or you know, fill in the blank. Just be quiet. Yeah. Rule number nine, offense is a choice. It is up to you whether or not you are going to be offended. It's up to you. I have an Instagram post about this and I'll link it down below in the description box because I think it's so important for people to understand that like you don't have to be offended. People may do things that maybe you have the right to be offended by, but you don't have to be offended. You don't have to ruin your day. You don't have to get upset. You don't have to let their comments, you know, now change your mood because why would you do that? You know, when you are so confident in who you are, when you are so standing in your faith and you know where you're going, somebody else's comments should not be able to budge you. Offense is a choice and you have the capacity to choose not to be offended. Rule number 10 is that being busy is not necessarily being productive. This is something that we have to accept as we are on our maturity journey is that just because you have a lot to do all day, it doesn't mean you're getting things done. It doesn't mean you're adding value to the world. It doesn't mean you're being productive. You may be busy doing a bunch of different things, but if there's no value, if there's nothing coming out of that, it's not productive, you know? And that's something that we need to be able to um, work on internally and knowing that, okay, I may be busy doing a lot of things, but if I'm just always busy, I'm gonna be busy for the rest of my life. So we have to learn how to be productive and not necessarily a busy. So that was a lot, but those are 10 rules that I believe every single mature woman should be living by, and I probably have 10 more. So let me know what you guys thought about this video. Comment down below which rule was your favorite, which rule was kind of shocking to you. I want to know. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, you are successful, yes, even right now. Mwah!